Are you ready to be blown away? Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am your old Papa Cheddar, and today we're talking about windmills, and more specifically, gears. That's right, the torque, the power, the speed at which you need to run your varying mechanical contraptions. So join me today as I try and break this down in a simple way, and as a little disclaimer, I don't know any of the technical terms for any of this stuff. This is just what I've discovered messing around in my creative world that you see here behind me, and it looks extremely confusing. And you know what? It is! Oh yes, but hopefully we can break it down into a, uh, well, a more simplistic way and get yourself the best possible windmill setup for your needs. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you've been spending most of your time with windmills setting up weird stuff like this that just doesn't really seem to work all too well. You know, just weird little elbows everywhere trying to add power into things and it just, it becomes a mess. You're wasting resources and you don't really know what you're doing. Well, by gummit, there's just got to be a better way. And what's more, there is. Oh, yes, you're in luck, ladies and gentlemen. There is a better way. So one thing you got to ask yourself, are you after torque or are you after speed? Because there is a very a difference and, um, well, it, it will change your setup quite a lot. We're going to be using Helv hammers for today's demonstration just to keep everything kind of the same and streamlined. But you can, of course, also use pulverizers or querns or, you know, whatever mechanical doodads you, you'd like. Meow then, if you're after speed, you'll most likely be running just a single hell, hell, oh, I can't talk, hell hammer like you see here behind me right here. This will be, um, you know, honestly, this is probably the best bang for your buck. This contraption right here, let me, oh, nope, oh, there it is. Uh, this contraption right here, you're not using any large gears. It's just single axle, single angle geared, single windmill, and you're going to get a pretty dang good result. And this should satisfy, honestly, the majority of your needs. So it's just very simple windmill. Angled gear, axle coming down to your location, angled gear, axle, and your contraption right here. Now then, if you're wanting to run a multiple gargantuan setup, well, then join me over here. Now, right here, I have 50. That's right, 50 Helv hammers set up in, in a row, in tandem, I guess you could say. And uh, currently, well, right now, I have 25 of them. You can see the transmission and clutch right here, which we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, 25 of these puppies are running off of a single windmill right here. Now, you can see that it is... Oh, oh there we go. Now, you can see that it is... Rotating, if ever so slowly. Right now, our wind speed is 121%, and this setup right here is going to get you a solid, a solid amount of torque for your needs. Now, uh, it is running very slowly. This is kind of an extreme example. If we come down here, you can see these health hammers moving ever so slowly. Oh, yeah, there they go. Come on, boys, you can do it. So this is accomplished by uh, having our, our torque converted, or our speed rather, converted into torque up here at the very top with a large gear. Now, this will slow you down some. But uh, you know what? If you want to power 25 health hammers right here in a, in a row, then by gum this will do it. And just adding a secondary windmill like that too. Add in another little bit. We're going to increase the power, increase the speed right here. And you can see these puppies are moving a lot faster. Meow, then we can come over here, engage our transmission, and all of a sudden we're working 50 different stinking health hammers. Oh, yeah, but it's so, so stinking slow. Now, the most maximum torque that you can get. Well, I mean, this isn't the maximum, but it's a very extreme example. And uh, quite frankly, this is not going to be, this is not going to do anything good for you at all. So you can see we have a similar setup here. We have our large gear. Well, let me, let me try and explain this a little bit. So the windmill is turning quickly, that little gear right there. And then that in tandem goes up to this larger gear, which will turn it, um... Well, more slowly, I guess, but that, that juices up the torque kind of thing. And then uh, through varying magic and gear ratios, we are uh, transferring the power from gear to gear to gear to gear kind of thing. I don't really understand it myself, but you can see there each of these large gears is turning slower and slower than the, than the last one. So this one is barely, barely moving. You can hardly see it. And, um, you know, this one doesn't look like it's moving at all, but it is. And right here we have one hundred health hammers set up and look at how fast that windmill is working it's that one right there and that is it's just chugging away so we could honestly attach even more than 100 health hammers to this puppy right here and we'll have the torque and the power from a single windmill to do it although if you're doing like uh let's say blooms iron blooms for example they're gonna go cold before these things ever land the first first strike on it so this is a very extreme example of how you can uh you know change your your speed, increase the power and the torque that you need just by changing the gear ratios coming from a large gear up top to, 
you know, small gear, large gear, small gear, large gear, and just kind of wither in its way down. That made no sense at all. Like I said, I'm very bad at explaining these things, but fear not, I'm, I'm getting to a point, kind of. So from our first example over here, there it is, yep. We have the large gear up top, which is keeping the, uh, the torque conversion zone or whatever closest to the power source. So one thing that I have found here is the longer the run, so like if this axle right here, you know what I'm saying? The longer that is, the more you're losing out on power and speed. So you want to keep things closer-ish to your windmill as you can, you know what I'm saying? As close to it as you possibly can. So if we come over and look at this example right here, where, you know, it gets kind of a little convoluted, but uh, we have small gear to small gear and then our large gear down here at the bottom. So you'd think that's the, basically the same exact setup as the one over yonder that we're powering the 25 stinking health hammers with. But you'll notice here that it cannot even move a single health hammer. We're losing far too much power for whatever reason. I don't really understand it. We break that puppy free and kaboom, it starts going. Now, this should be, this should be the fastest possible way that you can um, move a health hammer, but... It's not working here for whatever reason. We have 131% uh, wind speed on our rotor. We add this gear in, it wants to work. It tries, but oh no, it doesn't work. Now, if we duplicate this process, we will require three more large gears. So if we, uh, if we have them side by side, just like this, these two large gears are gonna wanna fight each other. They're going different directions. Um, oh, hang on. There we go, they're going different directions. You can see... If I want to start, there we go. See how they're one spinning, well, they're both spinning clockwise rather. So this gear, if we throw a gear there, it's gonna to wanna to turn this puppy counterclockwise. So it just doesn't work. See that? It made the switch and they come to a grinding halt. That's right, okay. We can rectify that by changing the, by changing the, um, the rotation of the central gear. So clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, and that would be enough to run this Helvhammer right here at a decent pace. Oh, come on, you're making me look bad, Bubba. You're making me look bad. Okay, well, it's running it, all right? It's running it. So, I mean, not optimal. We're losing a lot of power in this setup right here also. Now, another way you can go is having the large gear up top from meeting with the small gear kind of thing, going down to another large gear and then back to this puppy. Um, kind of unnecessary. It's basically the same thing as this one here where we have zero large gears in play. I just fix that, there we go, that was gonna bug me. Um, yeah, so basically the same exact thing because you're, you're changing the gear ratio to a larger gear from a small gear, but then down at the bottom, you're changing it right back to a small gear. So you might as well not even have the large gear. And if we take a peek, we gotta kinda line these up. Okay, so it's that one right there. It's a very subtle change, but the small gear, small gear combo is moving ever so slightly faster than this one. It's really, really hard to see. But this puppy right here is, uh, if you're looking at it, it is moving, I'd say it's moving faster. Yeah, we're getting more strikes in. But again, this is going off of two stinking windmills right here, multitude of large gears. So for a very, very slight increase in speed, you're using a heckin' lot more resources than, uh, than what it's really worth, you know what I'm saying? Now let's take a, a half a second and just, we should have done this first. Let's go over the, what we can use to do this stuff. Of course, we have our typical windmill setup, the sails, the rotor, angled gears, the wooden axle. We have the clutch and the transmission and the brake, which these things, let me just, let me pop these in. So how the transmission and the clutch kind of work, we'll come over here. So you can see the transmission, if we place it by itself, it is two gears kind of side by side, but not attached. So similar to a car, you have a clutch here, which when engaged, it is going to uh, combine these two gears, the transmission, thus conjoining the circuit. You can see now all these ones are starting to, you know, crawl, crawl to a start. We remove the clutch, disengage it, and now these are detached. And now it's just this one. These puppies back here are not being powered. Now the brake is kind of a, uh, it's kind of wonky right now. It's uh, honestly, a lot of things with the windmills are a little bit wonky at the moment, but you know, it's okay. It's good stuff. The brake essentially is exactly that. You can kind of see how it's supposed to work. We engage the brake, It's it clamps down on the axle and doesn't move it. And you can see it's not really turning the health hammer right now. 
So sometimes you gotta like break a piece, conjoin a piece, and then bam, it's working again. Little bugs like that, it's kind of irritating, but you know, it's it's simple enough to fix. You break a thing, you place it back down. Happens a lot with the large gears. You'll have to break and replace the gears or an axle in the lineup. Engage the brake, and it's not instantaneous, but it will be slowing down right about. Yeah, there you go. You can see it screeches to a halt. Screeches. So, you know, hopefully you're not driving your van on a Sunday morning and a little Jimmy jumps out in front of you because these brakes are not going to stop you in time. Oh, God, no. No, that's that's for sure. Poor Timmy or Jimmy. I forgot what I said. Anywho, you know, then you can open up the brake again and maybe it'll get started. We'll see. There it goes. Okay, so it's it's... It slowly winds up to a start again. Okay, so that's the brake. I don't use them. But honestly, I seldom even use the uh, the clutch transmission, although it is a very... It, it can, definitely can, uh, you know, come into handitude kind of thing. How can it come into handitude, you might ask? Well, let's say that you're... Well, let me clean up here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Let's say that these three health hammers are what you're using, okay? So what you can do is you have a transmission between each of them with clutches, clutches, and... Uh, if we're just running it off of a single windmill, you know, maybe the winds are too weak and you can only run one health hammer. So you disengage these two clutches and you just have this first one engaged. You know what I'm saying? Then you're powering one health hammer. Ooh, the winds picked up a little bit. Well, now we can run a two health hammer setup. Then you have stormy, blistery winds like what we have today. Well, let's run all three of those stinking health hammers. So the transmission and clutches can definitely be quite a handy thing. And of course, you can just look in your handy dandy notebook here and, um, you know, let's, uh, mechanical power. There it is. Mechanical power. And this will give you a pretty solid overview of stuff. You can also look on the wiki and, um, you know, get some more information there, even as far as, uh, da, 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 let's see. Yeah, checking the ingredients of everything you need. So somewhat uh, intensive, need a lot of resin, a lot of lumps of fat. And uh, definitely for the sales, you need the uh, the flax, the flax. Now this up here, ladies and gentlemen, I built this wall just to kind of show you that, you know, as long as you don't have anything in between, you know, within five blocks or however many sails you have of the rotor itself, this will still keep chugging along. Like this should not work. There's wind blocks in front and behind it. This windmill should not be powered, but these don't matter. We have like phantom or temporal winds, you might say. That uh, these windmills, they can just keep on stinking rocking. You know what I'm saying? Just keep on stinking going. So. You know, don't feel bad if you build your windmill up next to the side of a mountain. Um, it'll still work. Yeah, oddly enough, it'll still stink and work. So let us talk a little bit about wind speed. So this example right here, you can see I have a windmill all the way up at the top. You cannot build any higher than this on, well, at least on my creative world I, for whatever I set my height to. So there is a maximum uh, a ceiling of you can build and I do have a windmill up there. So, you know, the the wind, the higher up you go, the stronger the winds get to a certain point that is anyway. So you would think that this puppy right here behind me, being that it's at the very, it's basically in outer space right now. It's running a Nash, NASA moon mission kind of thing. Uh, you'd think that that would be extremely powerful and fast, but it's not, there is a maximum. So your speed increases by 1% for every block above the world sea level plus 10. So what that means is that if you are, let's say you have a standard world height of 256 for your world, your sea level is going to be Y110. So then with the plus 10 and then one more, you will be at Y121, you'll be at 1% more speed. Now this maxes out at 50% speed increase. So with a sea level of 110, then at Y171, you will have a maximum speed bonus for height of the 50%. So building anything higher above that, then, you know, if it's not for aesthetics or anything, you're not going to get any more power for it. So that being said, like these puppies right here, this guy is getting out of this whole setup. This guy is getting the most power speed increase. And we can see that if we come over here, you can see he's at 150. Next one down here, 148 and 141. So the higher up you go, of course, to a certain point, you will be getting more power, more speed. Now it also works the opposite way. So if you're going below sea level, it will reduce at 50% four blocks below and 66% at eight blocks below, rapidly increasing towards 100% reduction. So just don't stink and build below sea level. There's no wind down there, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, four blocks below sea level. So if we're at a Y110, that means at Y106, 
we have just lost 50% of our speed. And you know, nobody wants that. Nobody sinking wants that. It's also important to note that wind speeds vary at time and location in the world. Sometimes there's super high wind speed like what we have today, but I, I kind of did that in my, you know, I use commands and stuff. Uh, you know, different times of the day, sometimes there's no wind speed at all. And also depending on where you build in the world, that will also change your know, wind patterns on climate and all kinds of crazy mumbo jumbo jazz that I just don't frankly understand. So that's kind of a uh, uh, thing that you just can't really anticipate for. That's why these, um, the, but, but, let me find them again. These clutches and transmissions can be such a boon, you know what I'm saying? Because then if you have three, these three health hammers set up with just axles and you have no, no wind, then you know, you either have to break an axle or you're just not gonna be running the power whatsoever your health hammer set up at all. So with the clutches, you can engage and disengage depending on your wind speed. So I, I highly, highly recommend doing that. Now you might be saying, what if we move that gear all the way up here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's stink and try it, shall we? Let us stink and try it. So we'll bring a large gear, kapow, break that. And as you can see, this uh, this isn't even working. Let me break one of these just to make sure we're not bugging out. And it wants to start, it tries, and then it stops again. But um, oddly enough, if we if we change this over to like this setup with the large gear coming right at the windmill, it works. It's stinking works. It doesn't make sense, but it uh, it's stinking works. Let me uh, let me show you really quick. And kaboom! There we go. So this is working, powering it, going pretty stinking swell. When we go from the rotor to the large gear down again to our health hammer, but for whatever reason, uh, small gear, small gear to this, it's just too much strain. And you can see we're not even attached here. It's too much strain to turn the large gear with just this tiny little gear. So at the very least, I'd recommend your windmill starts out going directly to a large gear. This will increase your torque. It will slow down your contraptions just a little stinking bit, just a little bit. But you know what? It's it's definitely worth it because on days where you're having a low wind speed, then this is still going to power your your apparatus, your apparatuses kind of thing. And I mean, look, you can run off this single windmill. You could run these 25 stinking health hammers. Not fast, mind you, not fast at all, but you can do it. Whereas like with this puppy right here, see, this is another example of the, the single gear, single gear kind of thing. No large gears in this lineup. We have four health hammers here barely chugging along and if we add just one more held hammer to it oh it comes to a screeching halt so can't even run five held have uh, can't can't talk either apparently cannot run five held hammers just the four here granted it's faster but i mean not by stinking much you know what i'm saying and look at that we removed we set this up to the same same amount well let me make sure that we don't have two windmills Yep, we totally do. All right, down to one-on-one. -on -one. Mono e mono right here with the windmills, ladies and gentlemen. So you can see that these two are, well, you know, I honestly think that this one's moving faster also. The large gear ratio up at the top there by the windmill. Yep, I'd say that's moving faster. So all around better. I definitely, this is the way I recommend doing it. If nothing else, just, ah, 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 God, flying's hard sometimes. Excuse me, excuse me. I definitely recommend just uh, just having the large gear coming right off of your windmill rotor right here, and that will give you all the torque, the power, the speed you need. And I mean, do you really need more than, let's say, a handful of uh, health hammers like this? You know what I'm saying? And also, too, with this setup, you can have the uh, the windmills. Well, you can't really see it right here. You can have the windmills lined up in uh you know a straight line kind of thing you can see right there they're all lined up so that'll make your builds look better i think instead of being all cattywankus like something like this you know what i'm saying where you have one windmill here the other one over and up a little bit kind of thing just to extend gear ratios and such so you know do with that what you will and um also too in your in your random in your smithing areas or whatever it wouldn't it be nice just to have four anvils right here all lined up side by side by side by side kind of thing really streamline the process instead of doing something like this where you got you know anvil 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 all crazy cattywankus all over the stinking place and stuff that just doesn't look good that just doesn't look good for anything even something like this you know not ideal but you know this this is another good example of the clutch system kind of thing you see we can just remove the the clutches and this one starts working a little faster we, we clutch into this transmission again, they slow down, now we're at two, and then we do a third and kapow, 
they're slowing down even more, thus spreading out the power output from the uh, the windmill up at the very top kind of thing. Um, you know, but it just doesn't look as good, doesn't look as neat or as tidy as this. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this was even slightly helpful. Like I said, I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing or, you know, I don't really know the technical mumbo jumbo or why it works kind of thing with different gear ratios, different, um, you know, speed and torque stuffs and everything. Um, but you know, it just, it just works. So you have the maximum torque, you have the maximum speed, and then you have what I recommend, which is obviously again, the large gear at the top. We're coming right off of the windmill rotor. That's going to be the optimum way to power windmills in my personal and professional Ventarian opinion. So if uh, if I missed anything or if you guys have any questions, please do let me know down in the comments below. I'll answer them to the best of my uh, capabilities, which isn't really much, you know, but hey, I'll do my best. And, um, you know, I hope I hope this helped some of you guys at least with, uh, you know, with with with, you know, this with windmills, with gears, with the craziness, the madness. I've spent hours in this world just trying to figure this out as I, for one, haven't really seen any good description of at least nothing I understood, you know. So this is just me not understanding what's going on, not relaying it to you properly. But it works. It just stinking works. So do it. Just do as you're told. And look at this panda. He's sleeping. Oh, and look, this one's standing up. Hi. Oh, isn't he cute? That's right, I'm flexing my bears right now. Do you have bears? No, you don't have bears. Only Papa Cheddar's got bears. That's right, hardcore panda flex, baby. Hardcore panda flex. And by the way, like, how big are these stinking polar bears? These guys are huge. Huge. This is unrelated to windmills and gears whatsoever. I just wanted to flex my bears. Oh, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, anywho, without further ado, I do hope you enjoyed your time here with me today. I'll catch you on the flippity flop. And as always, I love you. Bye. Now watch me spank this bear. Oh, he's so big. Ah, look, I gotta fly up to him to even like, ah, huge, huge stinking bears.